His Highness the Aga Khan, Chancellor of the University, Princess Zara Aga Khan, Chairman Zakir Mahmoud, and the members of the AKU Board of Trustees, Chairman Moye Zalibai, and the members of the AKU Kenya University Council, President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin, our chief guest, Dr. Peter Kalmas, climate scientist, author, and activist. Our guest of honor, Dr. Peter Mathuki, Secretary General of the East Africa Community, Provost and Vice President, Academic Carl Armrein, Distinguished faculty and staff, our generous donors, partners, volunteers, and alumni, family members of the graduates, our online audience, and above all, the members of class of 2021. Today's program will consist of two parts. In the first, we will install Mr. Suleiman Shahabuddin as President and Vice Chancellor of the University. We will hear remarks from Princess Zara Aga Khan, President Shahabuddin, our chief guest, Dr. Peter Kalmas, and our student valedictorian, Adnan Ali Khan. In addition, we will announce the recipients of this year's faculty and staff awards and present our student awards for outstanding academic achievement. The second part of our program will consist of degree presentation ceremonies in Kenya, Pakistan, Tanzania, and Uganda. At these ceremonies, the graduates will receive the degree and diplomas for which they have worked and studied so hard. Those of you watching online will be able to view the ceremony of your choice. We will now begin our program. I request Mr. Zakir Mahmoud, Chairman of the Board of Trustees, to declare the Global Convocation Ceremony of the Aga Khan University open. I declare the Global Convocation Ceremony of the Aga Khan University open. Thank you, Chairman Mahmoud. I call upon Dr. Mohamed Hassan Nasir from the class of 2022 in the Master of Health Professions Education Program in Karachi to deliver the Tilwat and translation. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wa'tasimu bihablillahi jami'an wa la tafarraqu وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ مَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا In the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. And hold fast all together by the rope which God stretches out for you. And be not divided among yourselves, and remember with gratitude God's favor on you. For you were enemies, and He joined your hearts in love, so that by His grace you became brethren. I call upon Joel Wanguba from the class of 2021 of the Institute for Educational Development in Tanzania to deliver the invocation.
The reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. God has also given each of us different gifts to use. If we can prophesy, we should do it according to the amount of faith we have. If we can serve others, we should serve. If we can teach, we should teach. If we can encourage others, we should encourage them. If we can give, we should be generous. If we are leaders, we should do our best. If we are good to others, we should do it cheerfully. Dear God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to receive a true education. The one that is not only for a preparation of a profession, but for the all of life. We thank you for the teachers and administrators at the Aga Khan University, the people with giant intellect and extensive research, the people who have opened to our view vast fields of knowledge. We know that it's by you that we've come this far. We pray that you strengthen us as we go forth to bring solutions to our societies. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the appointment of a new president is a momentous occasion for any university. As such, it is often celebrated with an installation ceremony that formally marks the beginning of their administration. The appointment of Mr. Suleiman Shahabuddin is especially significant for the Aga Khan University as he is becoming only the third president in our 39-year history. Our ceremony will begin with previously recorded remarks from our Chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan, who will introduce the President and Vice-Chancellor. We will then hear remarks from Princess Zara Aga Khan. The ceremony will conclude with the presentation of the University Medallion to the President and Vice-Chancellor by Princess Zara Aga Khan. The following footage of His Highness the Aga Khan is taken from his speech at last year's convocation ceremony. Our university has known remarkable growth in the past 15 years. New facilities, new campuses, new faculties, and impressive new technologies. The university has also grown as a leading academic and intellectual force. AKU graduates are reaching the highest levels of qualification and accomplishment. It is most gratifying to see that some of them are now returning to AKU as faculty and leaders. These achievements are a source of great happiness for our trustees and me. President Rasul's impressive accomplishments have given us the confidence to broaden our horizons and expand our aspirations of excellence. With these aspirations in full view, I have appointed Suleiman Shahbuddin as president of AKU. Suleiman, who began his career at AKU 35 years ago, is coming home along with his wife, Zinat, who is a graduate of the university and holds a PhD in nursing. I have known Suleiman for many years. He has been the regional CEO of the Arkan Health Services in East Africa for a decade and previously CEO of the Arkan Hospitals in Kenya and Tanzania. I have been continually impressed by his commitment, his capacities as a leader, and his continuing dedication to learning. Please join me in welcoming them back both to AKU. It is my honor to invite Princess Zara Aga Khan to address the convocation. Our chief guest, Mr. Peter Kalmus, climate scientist, University of California, Los Angeles. 
Our guest of honour, Dr. Peter Matuki, Secretary General of the East African Community. Chairman Moez Alibai and members of the AKU Kenya University Council. Chairman Zakia Mahmoud and members of the AKU Board of Trustees. President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Jagudin. Provost, deans, faculty and staff, generous donors and friends of AKU around the world, parents and family members, distinguished guests, and most importantly, our graduates. The graduating class of 2021 is a watershed moment in the lives of its members and their families. And the installation of President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin is a milestone in the history of the Aga Khan University. This is therefore a doubly joyous day, the kind that comes along only once in a very rare while. I will be speaking today on behalf of the University's Chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan. I would like to convey the Chancellor's deep gratitude and my own to the Government of Kenya and the Commission for University Education for granting AKU its charter. I'm also delighted to welcome the founding members of AKU's Kenya University Council, which will provide oversight to the university's operations in Kenya. Today, I am filled with hope for the future. How could anyone not be, knowing what this day represents? President and Vice Chancellor Shahabuddin brings to his position a wealth of experience and lengthy record of success in both East Africa and in Pakistan. His career embodies the themes of opportunity, cross-cultural connection, and commitment to improving quality of life that define AKU and the Aga Khan Development Network. Already he has begun to build on the strong foundations laid by former President Firoz Rasul. Moreover, he now enjoys the wise counsel of the University Council, Chairman Moez Alibai, and of the new chairman of the AKU Board of Trustees, Zakia Mahmoud. It is therefore with great pleasure that I welcome President Shahabuddin to his new role, thank former President Rasul, and congratulate Chairman Alibai and Chairman Mahmoud on their recent appointments. I also wish to thank our retiring chairman of the board, Dr. Haley Debas, for his extensive contributions to the university's development for the past 12 years. It is with equally profound pleasure that I welcome each of you, our graduates, to the ranks of the alumni of the Aga Khan University. Your fellow graduates are changing lives from rural clinics and classrooms to laboratories in world-renowned universities. I know how proud you are to be part of this illustrious tradition and how proud your families are to be watching you today. This AKU class has worked harder for this moment than any other ever has. The last two years challenged you with lockdowns, quarantines, and isolation. But you found new ways to learn, to connect, and to maintain your motivation amid each new wave of the pandemic. The diplomas and degrees that you are about to receive testify to your fortitude and agility. In years to come, you will always be able to look back and draw strength from your achievements during this momentous period. Convocation is a celebration of individual achievement, but it also reminds us of our connections and our dependence on one another. Each of us is a link in a chain that extends backwards and forwards in time, and outwards across borders and boundaries. That is especially true at AKU, as this globe-spanning event testifies. With these bonds in mind, I wish to thank all those who have made it possible to send these 664 women and men into the world to educate, enlighten, and care for their fellow human beings. 
our faculty and staff have demonstrated extraordinary dedication to our students and to our mission. Our frontline health professionals have displayed exemplary courage in the face of COVID-19. I cannot thank them enough, and on behalf of the Chancellor, for their many sacrifices. We are grateful to our alumni, partners, and volunteers, and we are profoundly thankful for the generosity of our donors. I began by speaking of hope. The hope I refer to is not an idle wish. It is the hope one feels when there is strong evidence for optimism. It is the hope our Chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan, has called probably the single most powerful trampoline of progress. That is the hope I believe unites us today. It is warranted first by the history and impact of the Aga Khan University. AKU will mark its 40th anniversary next year. From a seed in the mind of our Chancellor, it has blossomed into an institution that spans three continents and stands at the heart of the AKDN's unwavering commitment to the countries that it serves. In Kenya, that commitment is visibly symbolized by AKU's towering new university center in Nairobi, a world-class academic facility that is one of the largest investments in higher education in the country's history. Globally, AKU has educated over 18,000 individuals. It cares for more than 2 million patients every year in internationally accredited hospitals. And it recently ranked amongst the top 100 universities in the world in public health. It also serves as a trusted advisor to government and is a powerful advocate for pluralism and for women's empowerment. During the pandemic, the value of the university's capacity for cutting-edge inquiry has never been clearer. Its researchers have made important contributions to the fight against COVID-19. And AKU is also contributing to another crucial battle, one that our chief guest, Peter Kalmus, will be talking about shortly, the battle against climate breakdown. Along with the AKDN as a whole, AKU has committed to becoming carbon neutral in its operations by 2030, making it one of the first institutions in Pakistan and in East Africa to do so. In short, the university's record is one truly that instills hope. But most of all, the hope we feel today is warranted by you, our graduates, by your hunger for knowledge, your compassion for your patients, your joy in sparking curiosity in your students, and your zeal to find the facts and share them with your fellow citizens without fear or favor. I have no doubt that this hope fills our hearts and that this pride swells our chests and will be amply confirmed by your achievements in the years to come. On behalf of the Chancellor, my thanks to all of you. Thank you, Princess Zara Aga Khan, for your address to the convocation. We will now proceed with the installation of Mr. Suleiman Shahabuddin as President and Vice Chancellor of the Aga Khan University through a ceremony during which he will be presented with the university medallion. Cast in silver, the medallion is engraved with a university seal and is the symbol of vested authority to whom it is bestowed upon. I request Princess Zara Aga Khan to present to Mr. Shahabuddin the university medallion as a symbol of presidential authority and trust. Let us formally acknowledge the installation of President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin with a thunderous round of applause.
Thank you, Princess Zara Aga Khan and Chairman Zakir Mohammed. I now invite President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin to address the convocation. Uh, Chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan, Princess Zara Aga Khan, our chief guest, Dr. Peter Kalmus, our guest of honor, Dr. Peter Mathuki, Chairman Zakir Mahmood, and members of the AQ Board of Trustees, Chairman Moez Alibai, and members of AQ Kenya's University Council, provosts, deans, leaders, faculty, staff, and, uh, and alumni of the university, generous donors and valued partners, distinguished guests and family members, and most importantly, our graduates. Ham jambo, aslam alaikum, and a very good afternoon to all of you. What a day this is. I am profoundly honored to have been chosen to serve as the president and vice chancellor by our chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan. As this medallion reminds me, I have been entrusted with a great responsibility. I am humbled by His Highness's confidence in me. I pledge to do everything in my power to prove that it has been well placed. I'm deeply grateful to you, Princess Zara, for honoring us with your presence. Your participation speaks to the bright future of our graduates and of our university. It adds luster to an already brilliant day. Most of all, I'm excited by the opportunity I've been granted to carry forward the Chancellor's vision. By AQ's role as a powerful force for good in the world, and by the tremendous potential of all of you, our graduates. I remember watching my daughter, Anjia, graduate from AKU's medical college. By my side was my wife, Zenith, herself an alumna of the School of Nursing and Midwifery. Little did I know that I would be standing at this podium a short few years later, while they and my son, Basim, look on. Certainly, when I stepped onto the AQ campus as a 22-year-old purchasing officer and a fresh MBA graduate, I could not have imagined that I would return to the university one day in my present role. But that just demonstrates the transformations that AQU makes possible. Each of you, our graduates, have taken your own path to this moment. Some of you are the first in your family to attend university. Others are carrying on a family tradition as the sons and daughters of teachers, nurses, and doctors. For some, our campus was their home after leaving home. For others, AQU represented a return to academia after years in the workforce. I want to take a moment to acknowledge your individual journeys. The moments of doubt, the first time you got back an exam paper covered in questions or comments, and you thought to yourself, I've got work to do. The moments that galvanized your confidence, that day in the classroom, in the newsroom, in the library, in the clinic, when you achieved a new level of insight or excellence. I also want to recognize that you're part of a collective, one that stretches across three continents. As members of the class of 2021, you have forged lasting relationships. You have supported one another and built a shared commitment to helping those in need. And now you are ready to make your mark on your profession and the world. Congratulations. <laughs> this is a time of transition for our graduates. It is also a time of transition for AKU. But a change in leadership does not mean a change in the university's guiding principles. We continue to believe, as we always have, in the power of knowledge to solve humanity's biggest problems. 
And we continue to believe that AKU, as a powerful creator and disseminator of knowledge, can make an extraordinary contribution to improving life in Asia, Africa, and beyond. As our Chancellor, His Highness the Aga Khan told the class of 1994, at its best, the university is linked to the welfare of society in which it is based. While taking knowledge from all quarters, such a university applies that knowledge to the solution of pressing problems of the world, both at home and abroad. That is, in fact, what AKU is doing. Allow me to elaborate. In East Africa, AKU and the University of Michigan are using cutting-edge artificial intelligence to identify individuals at risk of future problems. We are not the only ones who think that the project has tremendous potential. It just received more than $6 million in funding from the National Institutes of Health in the United States. In Pakistan, AKU reduced newborn death rates by more than 15% in eight rural districts with that are home to 14 million people. How did we do it? By sharing our knowledge with hundreds of public and private health facilities and thousands of community health workers. AKU researchers are using stem cell and gene editing to develop new treatments for blood disorders and cancer such as leukemia. Others have analyzed the test scores of 15,000 students to show which factors improve performance in maths and science. While few other researchers are studying indigenous efforts to protect the rights of minorities in Muslim majority countries. As Prince Zara highlighted uh, a moment ago, we are also working to slash our carbon emissions and become one of the few universities in the world to achieve carbon neutrality. It is an ambitious goal that will require tremendous innovation, but we are committed to achieving it and to helping other universities to follow in our footsteps. In the coming years, we will launch new undergraduate medical and nursing programs in East Africa, build a new university center and hospital in Kampala, and open our Faculty of Arts and Sciences in Karachi to prepare young men and women as leaders with a unique education that spans the social sciences, natural sciences, and the arts. As all these examples show, and as AQU approaches its 40th anniversary, we remain faithful to our founding vision while acting boldly to meet new challenges. I'm grateful to all those who make our success possible, the policymakers who create the enabling environment in which we work, among them our guest of honor, Dr. Peter Matuki. Our generous donors, volunteers, alumni, and partners including our fellow agencies of the ARC and Development Network. Nothing has given me more pleasure in my first months in office than getting to know and working with the diverse members of the AKU family. Ladies and gentlemen, the university's biggest contribution to the countries we serve will always be our graduates. Graduates, our alumni, your predecessors, walk the same corridors and courtyards that you have walked, and learned in the same clinics and classrooms. They wore the same green and gold that you wear now. And every day, they are proving just how powerful an AKU education can be. They are founding schools and clinics in underserved populations, winning international recognition for the teaching, research, and leadership serving in government and shaping public policy, launching high-tech startups and writing award-winning poetry. Here at AKU, they are among some most valued leaders, scholars, and practitioners. Their record proves that you can achieve your most audacious ambitions. Today is not an end. Your journeys are just beginning. Now is the time for you to show the world what an AQ graduate can do. Thank you. Thank you, President and Vice-Chancellor Shahabuddin.
Let us once again acknowledge the installation of President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin. Thank you. University Registrar Dr. Leila Akbarali will now introduce our chief guest, Dr. Peter Kalmas. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Peter Kalmas. Dr. Kalmas is an associate project scientist at the Joint Institute for Regional Earth System Science and Engineering at the University of California. His research centers on cloud physics and aims to improve our understanding of how the planet is changing in the age of global warming. In addition to having published more than 100 peer-reviewed articles in physics and earth science, Dr. Kalmus is the author of Being the Change, Live Well, and Spark a Climate Revolution. He is also the founder of the website noflyclimatesci.org and the co-founder of the Earth Hero Climate Change app. Dr. Kalmus holds a BA in Physics from Harvard University and a PhD in Physics from Columbia University. He is the recipient of multiple awards for his scientific research and his writing. Dr. Kalmus is joining us today from California. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Kalmus. His Highness, the Aga Khan, Princess Zahra Aga Khan, Guest of Honor, Dr. Peter Matuki, Secretary General of the East African Community, Chairman Zakir Mahmoud and the Board of Trustees, Chairman Moyes Alibai and the AKU Kenya University Council, President and Vice Chancellor Suleiman Shahabuddin, ladies and gentlemen, and above all, to you, the incredible graduates. Greetings and congratulations. What an honor it is to address you today on this joyful occasion. Great job to all of you. I share your commitment to improving the lives of all beings on this earth. I want to acknowledge AKU's work to improve quality of life in the developing world, as well as the leadership that Prince Rahim and the AKDN are demonstrating in addressing climate change and environmental degradation. Now, this strikes me as a strange time in our planet's four and a half billion year history for giving convocation speeches. As a climate scientist, I see a meteor hurtling directly toward our achingly beautiful planet, and I don't yet see society or world leaders mobilizing to stop it. Fossil fuels are heating our planet at a rate of a tenth of a degree Celsius every five years. This may not sound like much, but for an entire planet to heat this quickly is both astounding and terrifying. The disasters we are living through now are just the beginning. At every additional fraction of heating, climate disasters will come faster and hit harder. Like gut punches to our global society, they will increasingly stress infrastructure systems, economic systems, energy systems, food and water systems, political systems, and ecosystems. The proximal cause of climate destruction is burning fossil fuels. Before we had a fossil fuel industry, the planet was in energy balance. The same amount of energy came in as sunlight as went back out to space, so it stayed at a constant temperature. Burning gas, coal, and oil has changed that. It continues pushing our planet further and further out of balance, forcing it to heat up. The crisis has been overwhelmingly caused by the global north, with impacts hitting the global south soonest and hardest, and powerful vested interests are doing what they can to block action. So what can we do? This is a question I've been grappling with for a very long time. 16 years ago, I was a physics PhD student in New York City, in love with the universe and its mysteries overjoyed to finally be part of the noble quest for human knowledge. I was interested in cosmology, the big questions, where we come from and where we're going. The year 2006 brought two big changes to my life. First, I became a dad, which was expansive. It connected me to the future. And second, I heard a lecture 
about how the earth was out of energy balance and heating up. This lecture rattled me. Earth is out of energy balance? This is absolutely monumental news. Literally the biggest story on the planet. It was then, and it's even more so today. I started learning about climate change. I tried to get my university to switch to electricity that came from wind power. I could only find one other person on campus who supported my cause, and not for a lack of trying. Because back then, hardly anyone cared about climate change. Social norms around climate hadn't started to shift. Now, social norms are unspoken, but very powerful shared beliefs. They're like society's subconscious mind. For example, the belief that it's normal to burn fossil fuels. Sure, it's destroying our planet, but it's a normal thing to do. Everyone's doing it. Social norms are like the water surrounding a fish. We swim in them every moment. They create society. They shape its systems and its power structures. But most of the time, we don't even notice them. They are partly responsible for climate and ecological breakdown, as well as humanity's breathtaking lack of response. How much we can still save will be largely determined by how quickly we can shift these norms. Now, as the years ticked by, I grew ever more alarmed and frustrated about climate inaction. By 2010, burning fossil fuels had become deeply upsetting to me. The connection between fossil fuels and worsening climate impacts was just too clear. So I started reducing my emissions systematically, scientifically, starting with the biggest things first, giving up air travel, biking instead of driving, and slashing my energy use at home, among many other changes. This taught me three valuable lessons. First, for me, it was fun to live with less fossil fuel. It engaged my curiosity, led me to new hobbies, and caused me to make new friends. Second, I experienced how we all rely on vast, impersonal systems for all of our daily needs. Food, water, clothes, streets, everything. To be able to get to zero fossil fuel use, all of those systems are going to have to change. And third, very few people were actually willing to follow me in these sorts of changes. When I started, I hoped my actions would inspire other people. But I'd say roughly maybe one out of 100 people are willing to systematically reduce their emissions. So while I think it's a great thing to do, it simply isn't enough on its own. By 2012, I'd become so alarmed that I couldn't focus on astrophysics any longer. So I switched into climate science. I also started speaking out as much as I could. I was told that scientists aren't supposed to speak out, but I did it anyway. How could I not speak out, seeing what I see and knowing what I know? We need to help each other wake up and quickly. We need a billion climate activists. We need to build a global climate movement that's even stronger than the fossil fuel industry. We need a huge number of engaged, passionate, courageous climate activists. We need to come together with courage, conviction, and creativity to stop the meteor that's hurtling towards us. No one is safe from global heating. There's no hiding from it on this tiny, connected, pale blue dot of a planet. The only safety will come from stopping it. And doing this will require deep changes in how humanity organizes as a society and how we live upon this earth. Climate work will be humanity's main task for the rest of this century. Healing the earth, restoring wild places, adapting to new disasters, and figuring out how to live side by side with each other and all the other species here who have just as much of a right to be on this planet as we do. There's infrastructure to build, technologies to invent. There's new legal and moral and even spiritual frameworks to come up with. There is new art to make, new economics to devise, and new stories to tell. We need institutions to devise new disciplines and new ways of thinking, rapidly reduce their emissions, educate the public, and create social change. AKU is already playing a hugely important role in the Global South and must keep going. We also need you, the graduates of the Aga Khan University, among the best and the brightest the world has to offer, to devote your lives to solving the greatest crisis humanity has ever faced. Contribute to global knowledge and innovation. Demand climate justice. Have the courage to cause good trouble. 
be the voice for the voiceless, for all the species that are going extinct and for future generations. Climate disasters will get worse before they get better. But we could stop all of this if we would make the collective choice to treat climate breakdown as an emergency. Imagine in the future that we've turned this corner, that the living earth is in the process of healing, that our species was on the brink of destruction, but came to its senses at the last moment. I foresee that this will bring a tremendous feeling of global solidarity, of cosmic solidarity with life in the universe. My dream is that I will live to experience a time when we are finally on the right path toward a more mature humanity, a kinder and more grateful humanity, full of joy simply to be here on this earth, one strand in the tapestry of life. I know that a much better world is possible. No law of physics prevents it. It's up to us. It's the journey of a lifetime, and it beckons to each and every one of you. Go out there and do it. Thank you, Dr. Camels, for those words. Convocation is a day for our graduates, but it is the members of the university's faculty and staff who guide the learning that ultimately cultivates in convocation. It is therefore appropriate that we take a moment to appreciate their contributions. I request Provost and Vice President Academic Carl Amrain to announce the recipients of this year's University Awards of Distinction. It is my great pleasure to hereby recognize the heart and the soul of our university, its faculty and staff. The title of Professor Emeritus, or Professor Emerita, is awarded to retiring faculty members who have made outstanding contributions to teaching, scholarship, administration, or service. It expresses the fact that even in retirement, they will remain highly esteemed and valued members of the AKU community. This year's recipients are Professor Joe Lugala, whose strategic leadership as Dean of the Institute for Educational Development, East Africa, greatly benefited its faculty and students over the last seven years. Dr. Farouk Topan, who made invaluable contributions to the development of the Institute for the Study of Muslim Civilizations and to the study of Kiswahili language and literature. <laughs> Professor Rihana Kamal, the founding chair of our Department of Anesthesia, Dr. Kamal is responsible for training many of Pakistan's anesthesiologists and is the recipient of a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Pakistan Society of Anesthesiology. <laughs> Professor Mushtaq Ahmed, currently Vice Dean of the Medical College Pakistan, Dr. Ahmed has had an indelible impact on generations of students and has profoundly influenced medical education in Pakistan and East Africa over the course of an illustrious career. Our next category, the Award of Distinction, is given to individuals who have made lasting contributions to the development of the university. This year's recipients are Dr. Shazad Jiva, Director of the AKU Examination Board, Over the past eight years, Dr. Jiva has revamped, expanded, and greatly strengthened the examination board. In doing so, he has made it a nationally recognized role model that is helping to improve middle school and secondary education in public and private schools across Pakistan. Next, Dr. Leila Akbarelli, Interim Vice Provost and University Registrar. 
a leader in the office of the registrar for 35 years. Dr. Akbarelli has expanded AKU's applicant pool, enriched the student experience, and provided valuable oversight of everything from on-campus housing to the awarding of scholarships. Our next category, the AKU Innovation Impact Award of Distinction recognizes individuals whose innovations have benefited the university and its hospitals. This year, the award is being given to those whose creativity and agility helped us to meet the challenge of the pandemic. This year's recipients are Mr. Pax Paul Bagori, electrical technician in the engineering department in Nairobi. <laughs> Mr. Bagori developed the ultraviolet disinfection machines that are being used throughout the Aga Khan University Hospital to eliminate SARS-CoV-2 and other microbes, benefiting patients and staff alike by providing them a safe and clean environment. This initiative by Mr. Bagori is consistent with our principles of impact and relevance. <laughs> Senior Instructor Azra Nassim, Director of Blended and Digital Learning. Starting in 2003, Ms. Nassim took the initiative to begin building the university's capacity in blended and digital learning. Her efforts prior to and during the pandemic have been crucial to AKU's ability to successfully conduct classes online over the last two years. <laughs> Assistant Professor Navid Youssef, Associate Director of Assessment and Research, AKU Examination Board. After the pandemic forced the cancellation of examinations for students across Pakistan, Dr. Yusuf played a crucial role in developing the evidence-based policy that governed promotions for millions of students nationwide. <laughs> Professor Zara Hassan, Director of the PhD in Health Sciences, Dr. Hassan has made AKU a national leader in Pakistan in COVID-19 testing as well as in the tracking of new virus variants using genetic sequencing and partnerships around the world. Our next category, the Award of Excellence in Teaching and Teaching Leadership recognizes exemplary classroom teaching and educational leadership that enhances teaching excellence within the university. This year's recipient is Associate Professor Kulsum Khias, Chair of the Department of Biological and Biomedical Sciences. Dr. Khias has been repeatedly recognized for her outstanding teaching by both AKU and international organizations and has played a leading role in enhancing the quality of education across the medical college. The next award is the Award for Excellence in Research, which recognizes outstanding research achievements and contributions to the creation of a strong research culture within the university. This year's recipients are Professor Philip Wood of the Institute for the Study of Muslim Civilizations. A historian of late antiquity, Professor Wood is the author and editor of seven books. His latest volume is The Imam of the Christians, published by Princeton University Press, which explores relations between Christians and Muslims in the 8th and 9th centuries in what is now Turkey and Syria. <laughs> Professor Assad Ali, Associate Dean for Research at the Medical College in Pakistan, and a member of the AKU class of 2001. As a principal investigator, Dr. Ali has brought in more than $20 million in external research grants to AKU 
and has made cutting-edge contributions to the study of infectious diseases, malnutrition, and vaccination. And finally, our final award. The title of Distinguished University Professor has been conferred on just two individuals in AKU's history prior to today. It is reserved for the complete scholar whose career is characterized by sustained excellence in research, teaching, and service. This year's recipient is Professor Mohammed Khorshid. <laughs> Professor Khorshid has shaped the development of AKU over the course of 37 years as medical director of the hospital, dean of the medical college, and founding chair of the Department of Oncology and the Department of Pathology. His contributions to Pakistan's healthcare system have been recognized with multiple lifetime achievement awards and with the President's Pride of Performance Award by the President of Pakistan. Ladies and gentlemen, these honors and awards will be presented to their recipients at in-person ceremonies in March. We are grateful to all those whom we have recognized today and for their exemplary service over many, many years and the strong example they set for all of us in the years to come. Thank you and good day. Thank you, Provost Amrain. We will now turn the microphone over to our graduates. I call upon Adnan Ali Khan, a student from the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery program at the Medical College in Karachi, Pakistan, to deliver the valedictory speech. His Highness the Aga Khan, Princess Zara Aga Khan, leaders of the university, distinguished guests, family, friends, and my fellow graduates. Good afternoon. My name is Anand Ali Khan, and I am grateful and honored to welcome you on behalf of the Al Khan University Class of 2021, a class of physicians, dental hygienists, nurses, educators, and journalists, or in other words, future leaders, pioneers, and trailblazers. Congratulations to each and every one of you for chasing your dreams to this destination. AKU has given us a multitude of opportunities to flourish in all aspects of our lives. We have been trained and pushed to achieve goals far beyond our expectations. There have been opportunities to grow, inspire, and to be inspired. It is being in the company of other passionate, ambitious, and talented students, as well as following the footsteps of many inspiring alumni that empowers AQ graduates to strive for excellence. Reflecting on my medical school journey has made me grateful for the memories I made and the lessons I've learned. From lifelong friendships with fellow students, residents, and nurses, forged through classes, clinics, and long night calls, to chai breaks with mentors that have shaped me into who I am today and will continue to influence who I'm yet to become. At AKU, there was always an emphasis on the academic side of a profession, but there was an equal importance placed on being a humanitarian. Each program here today has made unique efforts in shaping the world into a better place through service to their community. I would be remiss to not mention the elephant in the room, COVID, the reason we're sitting far apart, masked up, and our family and loved ones joining us virtually instead of being by our sides cheering us on as they've been doing for the last few years. We owe it to our faculty and administration who made sure we are ready to face this new reality. Even the unsung heroes who spent hours helping us follow COVID protocols testing us weekly to make sure we remain negative on paper and positive in our attitudes. During the pandemic, our student experiences may have to have been socially distanced, but whether it's community-based volunteer camp, an academic research society, or EQ Zone's student mentorship program, Synergy, COVID didn't stop any of us from reaching out and doing what we do best. Rather, it changed us, motivated us to volunteer more, to innovate in research, and most importantly, it reminded this community that even students can and do make a difference. We learned one of the most important skills you can't be taught in a classroom, the ability to adapt, to pick ourselves up when we're battered and bruised and use that experience to become wiser 
and more agile than ever. With this in mind, I can safely say that this class of AQ graduates will be one of the most tenacious, resilient, and open-minded groups of professionals to come from this institution. I think I speak for my entire class when I say this. We are ready. To our Chancellor, His Highness, faculty, family members, and everyone who gave us their unwavering support in our journey here, I cannot thank you enough. On that note, it's time for this class to look ahead for what's next in life after we step away from these familiar halls. As a fellow graduate of the class of 2021, I can promise you the following three things. Firstly, you are joining one of the strongest alumni communities in the world. A global family sprawled across six continents and 55 countries that will open their arms for you in your time of need. One that has embraced my classmates and myself, irrespective of distance, nationality, or religion. Many of these alumni are our personal heroes, and some of our greatest inspirations return back to this institution so that they may pass the torch to us. Remember, today you are not just the Alcon University graduates of Pakistan, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, or London. Today, you are global graduates. Secondly, you will be a leader in whatever you choose to do, and you will thrive. I know this because you have all succeeded thus far to be here on this momentous day, and that in and of itself is an act of courage. Thirdly, and finally, I can promise you this, you will change someone's life. In fact, many of you already have, not just those who scrubbed in way past midnight in surgery or their clinical partners that chose the right music in the operating room, but each and every one of you, just by virtue of being on this path, has made the world a better place. You have all chosen a career to give back to humanity and provide meaningful contributions to society first and foremost. I have no doubt that being in AQ has given us the tools to be our best selves and fulfill these promises. I believe I speak on behalf of my fellow graduates when I say that we are filled with excitement for the rest of our journeys. And whatever path we may end up on, we know that AQ has prepared us to take on the next challenge with agility, perseverance, and courage as part of who we are. Thank you and congratulations once again. Thank you very much, Adnan Ali Khan, for those words. We will now conclude the first portion of our ceremony with the always highly anticipated announcement of our student awards. I invite Vice Provost East Africa, Alex Awiti, to announce this year's recipients. The School of Nursing and Midwifery in East Africa presents its award of excellence to the students with the highest cumulative grade point average in each diploma and degree program. In Kenya, the recipient of the award of excellence are Immaculate Kamandi Mulumba, post RN Bachelor of Science in Midwifery with a cumulative grade point average of 3.57 out of 4. Judith Atieno Kababu, post RN Bachelor of Science in Nursing, with a cumulative grade point average of 3.62 out of 4. In Uganda, the recipient of the Award of Excellence are Dawa Patricia, post RN Bachelor of Science in Midwifery, with a cumulative grade point average of 4.7 out of 5. Namale Resti, Diploma in General Nursing with a cumulative grade point average of 4.73 out of 5. Zawedi Farida, Post RN Bachelor of Science in Nursing with a cumulative grade point average of 4.87 out of 5. The School of Nursing and Midwifery in Pakistan confers the Outstanding Graduate Award on the undergraduate student who achieves two feats. First, they must earn the highest cumulative grade point average of all the graduating students in Bachelor of Science in Nursing and post-RN Bachelor of Science in Nursing programs. Second, they must be the recipient of the Nursing Practice Award which is given to a graduating student whose clinical and community practice reflect a client-centered approach, distinctive 
critical thinking and problem-solving abilities and ethical decision-making. The recipient of the Outstanding Graduate Award from the School of Nursing and Midwifery in Pakistan is Fatima Bahadur Ali. Each year, the Medical College in Pakistan confers the Best Graduate Award to one graduating student from the Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery program. The award is presented to the student who earns the highest aggregate score on four certifying examinations that are conducted over the course of the five-year MBBS program. The recipient of the MBBS program Best Graduate Award is Mohammed Musab Munir. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Provost Awiti. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the first part of our global convocation ceremony. In a moment, we will proceed with our degree presentation ceremonies in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, and Pakistan. At these ceremonies, the graduates will receive their diplomas and degrees. But first, I request Chairman Zakir Mahmoud to declare the first portion of the Global Convocation Ceremony closed. I declare the Global Convocation Ceremony of the Khan University for the graduating classes of 2021 closed.